How do you know I'm telling the truth? How do you know she was telling the truth? The moment she posted her video, every black woman started vilifying the black men. Everybody was posting it on every social media platform, talking down the black men, how the black men did not protect her. But nobody ever questioned her whatsoever. The same energy you had when you were defending her, when you were out there advocating for her without asking any questions. How come you didn't ask? Where's the proof? Where is the, where's the brick that he hit you with? Where's the police report? You know, why are you recording instead of calling the police? You know, instead of asking those questions, the moment she posted that video, people, women, automatically believed her. But now, I post a video telling my truth, telling what I saw, and people are like, where's your proof? What do you want me to go back to the scene of the crime and pick up the brick and show you, oh, this is the brick that hit her right across her face. Is that what you want? Like, I'm going to use your comment to uh, also address other people. You know, people are calling me a coward. That's okay. You can call me all you want. All I know is, I'm my life. I got my health with me right now. I got to, I got to go home to my daughter that night. You know what I'm saying? I got to go home to my daughter, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. I am not about to protect somebody. I am not about to risk my life for somebody that's out there looking for trouble. I'm not saying what happened to her was right. I'm not. I I, I condone violence. I'm not. I'm like like I'm not saying it was right for the guy to hit her with a brick. But all I'm saying is. I am not willing to risk my life for somebody that's out there looking for trouble. I have a daughter. I have a family that I got to go home to. He could have had a gun. Once again, like, I, I have a daughter. If that have happened to my daughter, that guy wouldn't be alive. I'll be in jail right now. But I'm not going to risk my life for somebody that's out there looking for trouble. I'm not. And you can believe me. Or not, that's up to you. I, I, like The only reason I posted that video in the, in the first place was to show people that there was another side to the story. To tell people to stop vilify the black men. The same way people are doing to me in the comment section, calling me all type of names. That's all I wanted to do. Like, not every black person is bad. Not every black man is bad. We want to protect our women. But at what cost? Don't go out there looking for trouble and going like, oh, the black man is going to protect me. Now you're putting my life in danger. You, you purposely going out there looking for trouble, waiting for a black man to risk his life for you. She wasn't innocent. I'm not about to risk my life for somebody that's out there looking for trouble. Why are you putting my life in danger? If she cared for the black man, she wouldn't have been putting herself in that position. She would have been causing trouble. But she, she don't care for the black man. She's out here causing trouble and vilifying the black man, telling him, oh, all your black men, how come nobody's protecting me? How come nobody helped me? Why would I risk my life when y'all are there looking for trouble? Why? It's like, you don't have to believe me. But all I'm saying is, I will stand up for the truth no matter who tells the truth. I'm not saying believe. I'm not begging you to believe me. That's, that's your decision to make. So guys, um, that's an updated video from one of the bystanders that was there from the woman who got bricked, hit with a brick in the face um, for apparently not giving her number. And this was outside, this was in Houston, Texas. And this man went to Instagram, I think TikTok as well, but the first time I saw it was on Instagram to tell people exactly what happened, his side of the story. Now, he's literally articulated all the reasons why he didn't step in. And he explains that, you know, he doesn't condone the woman being hit in the face at all. But he also lets people know that that she's a well-known troublemaker in the area. And even when you listen to this guy's voice, like, he, I, I thought he was giving more LGBTQ. But he says he has a daughter. And, you know, he, he, he has a wife and family and, and she's a troublemaker. You know, you've seen the videos of her going around slapping white men. Apparently, they are... They just skits. But even that, that whole energy that she puts out, she has lots of content about not being a supporter of black men. She's a single mother. She's a Somalian woman, immigrant. And she's been trying to go viral. I've looked at her content. So he's just simply saying, listen, you know, you can't be expecting random men, random black men to just come to your, come to your defense. When you're out here, when you're actively out here, you know, causing trouble violent up to men now i've said this before when it comes to us men we know the threat of violence is real but a lot of these women they rile up to men and when a man hits them they're like oh my god he hit me you have to understand you know when you deal with someone you do not know 
you have no idea how this person was brought up. You have no idea. And this is America. I keep saying, he said she might have had a gun. And you have random people on social media virtue singing and saying, I would have done this, you would have, you would have done a goddamn thing. Because no one ever does, do they? I said it before. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. People didn't do a goddamn thing for George Floyd. But everybody's going to be like, I would have done this. No, you wouldn't have. You would have done a goddamn thing. So I don't think, and it's become a thing now, protect black women, men. Oh, it's, you know, it's, oh, oh, black women are not safe. And as I said in the other video, he actually jumped in a car full of, full of, full of black women. So what are we going to say? Now, what happened to her is, is, it's, 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 like I said, it's disgusting, disgusting behaviour. But you have a man that has been vilified and been made to feel a certain type of way because he didn't step in for a woman that he doesn't know, for a, a plain madman who's bricked someone. Seriously. Like, I think, I think there needs to be more focus po point on this, you know? And then she automatically made it about, oh, these N-words ain't shit. Like, what? Why should they protect you? So in a previous video, I spoke about how my junior sister, how I spoke to her when she was going to school and taught her how she needs to carry herself, how to be streetwise and to be safe, and specifically dealing with guys. Um, this YouTuber, Tina Bean, has some content. And I think you might want to listen to it. Personally, never thought I'd have to come on TikTok and like speak about something like this because I just feel like I, in my brain, thought this was common knowledge. But let me go ahead and make a post about what happened to Ro. For everybody who doesn't know, she's a creator on here and she was hit in the head with a brick by somebody because she refused to give her number out. And that is what is basically circulating everywhere online. Um, and I was reading some tweets and I was like, I have a couple tips for y'all. Because some people don't seem to genuinely get it. And full disclaimer, this is not me condoning what happened to her. This is not me with any feelings, positive or negative, towards this creator. This is just a literal fact. So we're going to start with a quick little story time. When I was in college, I remember I used to live um, with a roommate. Her name was Genesee. She was uh, older than me. And when I say older, I mean like three, four years. And she was doing grad school. And she's black. Little thug, you know, little, ah, my little one too. So I remember I went out to this club. And it was called Stubblefields. And after we got let out, I went to school at WSU, by the way. Um, I had I actually knew this person and I guess he was really really drunk and he meant to go and hit his friend And he punched me in the face because he was so fucking drunk and I was wilding out y'all I was fucking wilding grown-ass man and nobody did anything about it One because they knew the guy two because they knew me three I don't know they I think everybody was just kind of in shock of what happened and they didn't want to get involved I remember I got home and she's like what the fuck happened because at this point I had a black eye And I'm telling her because my drum's sobbing I'm like wilding out and she said something to me, and I will never forget it to this day. She literally said, Christina, calm down, one. Two, this is why I don't go outside. And if I do go outside, I make sure that there's people around me who I know and who I trust. Because you never want to put yourself in a position for something to happen, and you have nobody there to ride for you. Y'all already know where this is going. By looking at her surroundings, the area she was in, the people that were around, and the people she was interacting with, I'm not saying it's any, you know, shade to her, but, like, just, like, when she was, like, you know, going up to people and shit, them motherfuckers look sketchy. They looked motherfucking sketchy. So now let's circle back to the video. So in the video, she's going like this. We're outside. As you got outside of the car, I'll show y'all. We're outside. These black men. And you hear somebody specifically say, we weren't even here. You literally hear somebody say, we didn't even see what happened kind of thing. Like, we just walked outside. And then you hear another black man saying, what do you want us to do? Like, what do you want us to do? Which brings up another point, which is somewhat valid. The somewhat valid point that is getting brought up is these people have families too. These people don't know you from a can of paint. These people did not see what happened. Some of these people just came outside. I'm not saying all of them. Some of them. They just came outside and you're expecting them to do what? To jump this man because you said he hit you in the head with a brick. Now, realistically, this is 2023. Usually, if you're a man and you're getting in an altercation with another man, you're literally running the risk of getting shot and killed or stabbed or there's a thousand and one things that can go wrong. Now, if you have a wife, a kids, families at home, that's not something that you're willing to risk on account of what one person says and you didn't even witness it. You weren't there. Or maybe you were there and you did see it, 
But again, your name is Bennett and I'm not in it. I have this friend in Seattle. He was sticking up for this girl. His name's Alden. And this man literally uh, got shot outside in his back. And now he's permanently paralyzed for life. So there's always that risk of what can go wrong, which why when I circle back and say, you need to be going outside with people who you know and who you trust, that is such a big thing because low key, if you didn't see it, even if you did see it, you cannot fault these people for it. They're not police officers. They're not going to put their lives on the line for random people. I'm not saying it's right, but there's crazy ass people out there and you never know. These people don't even know the full extent of the story. That could be your crazy ex-boyfriend. That could be, there's a thousand and one things that could possibly happen. So was it fucked up that that man did that? Absolutely. Yes. There's not even a question. There's not even a shadow of a doubt, but can we really hold these men accountable for saying, well, you didn't do anything? Mm, it's debatable. It's literally debatable. So there's that. And then this brings me to my next safety tip. Whenever somebody personally asks me for my number, I have always been taught to be extremely respectful about it until there's a reason to not be. I'm not saying that she was not respectful. This has nothing to do with her per se situation. But there are a lot of times online where I see women like laughing at guys or even in, in, in real life laughing at guys or trying to kiki or try to like diss them on like boy bye type shit. And again, you never know people's mental state. People can be mentally on the fucking spectrum. They could have a bad day, and that could be the last thing that fucking sets them off. You never know. Is it right? Fuck no. But do you have to do that to be safe? Absolutely. It's the same thing as when a police officer pulls you over. What do you do? You know there's specific shit that you have to do as a black person. Is it right? Fuck no. Do you have to do it to be safe? Absolutely. So that's why I'm gonna end this video at I again I my, you know my heart goes out to her. It's a very it's a very unfortunate situation, but ladies, please mind your surroundings. Don't go to places that you feel like something could pop off or may potentially not be safe. Always go with people that you're gonna be safe around, and always in the instance that men do approach you and you don't know who the fuck they are, try to be as respectful as possible because you never know what the fuck that person is going through or what the fuck they got going on. My name is China, the man name's voice. If you like the video, please make sure you like the video, drop some comments, and you also subscribe to our channel. Join the membership. We've got three different tiers, which will get you more exclusive access. Turn on the notification bells, and yeah.